Welcome to Play Change. My name is Ian. My name is Tony. Don't worry, we'll edit this out now. Um, you're good. I, I, I thought you, I thought you were going to add on to it, so that's why I'm like, let me. No, let me you're good. On to I it, am. So I'm realizing I forgot to at my so at this is Rosie Gold. This is the podcast that for right now we're calling Play Change. Uh, we're going to basically be two best friends in a room talking about news, talking about video games, talking about music and songwriting. My background is that I am, in fact, a pop artist, pop rock artist, singer, songwriter that has written music with Tony. We both have known each other for about almost 10 years now. We really bond over things like Banjo-Kazooie, other video games. And it's really been 10 years? That's the guess. I'm sure it's been more than that. Um, that's, that sounds, I mean, it sounds about right, because I remember we we met up, actually, no, we've known each other or maybe around high school, but we actually, but I would, I would say we've actually got to know each other at Nova during um that history class. When was yes. that? That what year? Twenty sixteen, I want to say. Yeah. Oh my God. It never mind. It yeah. has. Well, we we've been close for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It wasn't until that class that we've had together. I'm like, oh, Ian's a cool guy. I want to be friends with him. I I think the same about Tony as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> give give some background about who you are. All right, so my name is Tony. Um, I do have a small minor background in music, not as much as uh, Ian over there. Uh, I just dabble in a little bit guitar. Um, I did throw out some ideas for some of his for for a few of his projects, um, but definitely check out his project. It's really good. Um, as far as my, uh, my other background, I do post on uh, content on TikTok, um, mainly about anime, video games, food, specifically boba drinks. Cause that it's I'm a big fan of it. And let me just show you guys what I have right now. I'm also drinking a boba drink from Infinity, one of the local shops around here. Not sponsored by them by any means, but I just want to say they're pretty good. One of my the first favorite spots. It? So it is a, I'm glad you asked. It is a blue mist by the name. It's blue. It is incorporating a fruit called yuzu. It's a mix between mandarin and I think orange, according to what Google told me. And I can definitely taste that mix. So if you're into sweets, into it a little bit tardy, I would recommend it. But for anyone, anyone who is like a, I guess, very new to boba drinks, I would say go for a taro milk tea. That's like probably the go-to for anyone that's diving into the yeah. realm of boba tea. Does it have tapioca balls? Uh, uh, this one, no. I could have put the option for it, but it came with strawberry, uh, not strawberry, I'm sorry, popping popping boba. And it's a, the fruit is a passion fruit. I'm not sure if you can see that yellow around there. That is the popping boba right there. And for the listeners like listening, that they are there. I'm they are there, yeah. They are yellow. And usually with like, like tapioca, like you mentioned, it's like sweet. And when you bite into it, it's kind of chewy. This is more like a burst of flavor. So once you bite into the boba, you just get a burst of like fruit. Well, with my drink in this case, like a, a burst of like passion fruit flavor. And it's like just enhances the, the boba drink a lot more. So, yeah, I noticed I've been rambling on a lot about boba. So that's I mean, though, it's great because a, like the only the only built boba that I've ever had is like a coconut like slushy with tapioca balls at the bottom. Ooh, that's good. Only because like my parents used to love boba and that's what they would get. And as it as a kid, I was like a pickier eater. So I was like, that looks a little sus, but I will oh, also sus. drink it. And so now it's like, if I do get boba, I will only get that because going outside of my comfort zone with foods and things like that is not my cup of tea, no pun intended, um, but it is tasty. So I no, it's, uh, you're making me want boba. So it's, it's really good. And I'm not sure if you might've heard the story back in high school or like years ago, but they, there, there was like some rumors or stories going around how the tapioca balls was like, not really tapioca balls. It was like, like I, I forgot what they were saying but it, it it just made it sound so it was from like a, from a different animal and i'm like no that's not true at all guys like like do a quick google search and you'll see it's just tapioca balls I promise you it's good it's, it's really good end, it's back when the internet was probably a little bit less research heavy like mm -hmm. when they're just like oh mew is underneath the the truck Mew is underneath the truck. Is this not, regards to Pokemon Go? Yeah, no, not Pokemon Go. This was the rumor. Did you, this was the rumor going around for like Pokemon Yellow, Pokemon Blue, Pokemon Red. Is that Mew was hidden underneath the truck? No, what the fuck? I never heard of that. No. Wow, well, oh my guy feels. Oh, I feel look, so it bad. look it up. Look it up. Look it up, and I want to see your reaction to it. Look up Mew truck rumor. Because... All right, hold on. Let's... 
<laughs> Dude, I'm surprised you haven't heard truck of it. Rumor. No, I want to say maybe around that time, I was not a, like into Pokemon as I used to be. I think that was like after Diamond say? and Pearl. I want to say after like Diamond and Pearl, that was probably my, my was this big earliest Pokemon game, game that you've played. Like recent or, or earliest? No, 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 no. Earliest before Diamond and Pearl. Like, or did you start with Diamond Oh, and Pearl? the earliest before Diamond and Pearl will have to be Sapphire. Yeah. What? That, yeah. Dude, you're like, yeah. you're older than me. I play, I've <laughs> even played like Red and Blue. You have? Oh my goodness. Well, okay. So to be honest, no, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm BSing there, but I, I have played Yellow. That was the fir my first memory with a po with a Pokemon Game Boy game. I think that's like a lot of people's like the Yellow, Blue, Red version. I think that was a lot of like you know, for my generation, their first Pokemon game. And I'm sure whenever I tell people, oh, my first one was Sapphire. Yeah, that's ridiculous. I'm sure they would, Very Gen Z. Yeah, I'm sure they I'm sure they would have given the same response that you did. Like, Red, really? Sapphire? You're old. You should play the red, blue, and yellow version. I'm like, no, dude, I just didn't have a Game Boy Color at the time. Did, I had my first hand. You never handle played, was, uh, like, gold or silver or crystal? No, no. My first handheld was a Game Boy Advance, and I don't think uh, gold and silver were on a Game Boy Advance, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Let me see. Gold and button. silver. No, look up, really... the look up the Mew thing. I want to see your reaction. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me see. Uh, let's, an, let's see. Mew under the truck. Uh, okay. Let's see. Here's right here. Oh, my God. All here's these here. ads, I swear. Near the ship, Remerly City, Secret Ledge, here's home to so a single truck. Oh, you want to share my screen? Give me one second then. Uh, let me see. Share. Uh, where are we at? There we go. Okay, so this is what I'm reading right here. Let me know if that's clear for you. Yeah, maybe yes, I am. The only way to access is to have a Pokemon use a surf. Okay, crossbow. Okay, clever players have found a way to get read around Read it out this. loud for the folks at home. <laughs> okay, let me read it then. <laughs> Near the double S and ship in Vermilion City, there's a secret ledge that is home to a single pickup truck of unknown origin. And just to let y'all know, I know nothing of this is this is my first time reading about this rumor uh the only way to access this ledge is to have a po pokemon use the move surf which allows you to cross bodies of water and surf around the ship unfortunately under normal circumstances the ship and by extension access to the water leaves forever before players would attain surf okay clever players have found ways to get around this either by trading in a pokemon from another game that already possesses surf or by intentionally losing a battle on the ship after obtaining the move, sending them back to town without triggering the departure of the ship. Although impossibly because Nintendo has yet to explain the purpose of the truck, players began spreading rumors that either a rare item or the rare Pokemon known as Mew could be found underneath the truck. Oh, while this was not true initially, later releases of the game did hide a rare item underneath as a reference to... Oh, really? So they were like, yep, let's, do a quick call back. let's do a quick callback to the rumor and actually put something on there and they put a, put a rare item. Do you remember what the rare item was? I don't remember. It might have been like a rare candy or a nugget, probably. That would have been that would have been made more sense for, for more like a rare item. Okay. But yeah, that's actually that pretty was, cool. That was one wow. of those bigger ones. Like you know how in Super Smash Brothers Melee, how uh in Super Smash Brothers Melee it was uh Sonic and Tails were secret unlockables. If you beat like 10 people, you'll cruel smash. Yeah, and I think Knuckles was like yeah. somewhat uh, like involved something like in that, that well. yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was either Sonic and Tails or Sonic and Knuckles, but like it was a fake rumor for like an April Fool's Day joke, but no one could verify it because the internet wasn't that big at the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly to what it is now, like all the information that we can easily get access to. And also, as I told you the other day, I was using like the AI just to like search up simple information or like ask questions. It's like crazy, like thinking back to how we were like 10, like maybe five years ago to where yeah. we are now. It's just crazy. Like, wow. I agree. Well, mm -hmm. let's let's go on to the stories that we have to share for for you guys. Uh, I am actually going to be sharing a couple about things like child labor. Uh, we're going to briefly touch on uh, just some CEOs' remarks on some return to office, and uh, the last one that I'm going to be covering is uh, just. Uh, uh, former President Trump's comments on DeSantis on the Milk Boys podcast. <laughs> so this 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 child labor stuff. This is like 
just talk about child child labor. Yeah. Laws, so there's right? been or are you are you like kind of be like yes. very like so specific about it? There has been a lot of uh, rolling back on regulations on child labor recently, which is a funny thing because a lot of Republicans are the ones that are leading the charge on this, despite the fact that a lot of them want to quote unquote protect the kids when it comes to this panic about uh trans individuals or anything like that with all the anti-trans legislation being passed across the country so it is definitely something that is just very interesting to know because when you see republicans talking about protect the kids while not even prioritizing things like you know school safety or just attacking minorities it's like trans individuals or anyone uh in the lgbtqia plus community it's it's just a little bit like it doesn't make sense. It shouldn't make sense to any like normal person because of the fact that they say that they want to protect the kids, but they're really just like blowing up about a lot of culture war issues when it comes to actual things that would protect children like child labor and making sure that there are regulations on there. You hear crickets because at the end of the day, it's not really protecting kids that these Republicans care about, uh, mm-hmm. particularly these Republican legislators. Um, but I'll get right into it. Uh, let me share this screen right over here. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking at like a quick Google search on travel labor, labor and like what it is exactly. Yeah, no, no, no. Of course, no, no. So, like, of course I, like we all know what, you know, we, we hear travel labor like, ugh, like nasty stuff. But I'm just like trying to see what it is like specifically and how it's like, you know, been going on and i'm just like you know just doing a quick google search i see that an estimated 160 million children were involved in child labor around the world at the beginning of 2020 which is pretty much an increase of 8.4 million in four years which i mean i mean that to me that sounds pretty bad i mean you know the big the the bigger reason behind things like that is uh because instead of raising wages a lot of the times corporations will just want cheaper labor so whether it's like Mm -hmm. illegal immigrants or whether it's children they like, for example, one of the the bills that were passed recently was by the uh, restaurant lobby. Um, they they basically like helped write a bill to essentially make it easier for I think it's like 17, 16, 17 year olds to serve alcohol. Um, and you know, I, I will I will just get into it over here because I want to make sure that I have the the facts over here. So like, um. As you can see here, it's just hard to keep up with everything that's passed recently. But for in Arkansas, uh, Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders, and she actually used to be the press secretary for Donald Trump. I think she was the first one uh, recently. Mm-hmm. She, she got elected governor of, of the state, which is something that <laughs> that, that happened. Uh, it happened. Yeah. expands the ability for companies to employ children under 16 and they take big government out of it and they make it so that you don't have to verify if they are under 16 or not because we don't want the government in our labor uh so to go into this npr article basically uh effectively the new law signed by the republican governor applies to those who are 14 to 15 years old because in most cases arkansas businesses can't employ those under 14 under the youth hiring act of 2023 Children under 16 don't have to get the division of labor's permission to be employed. The state also has no longer, no longer has to verify the age before they take the job. Doesn't change the hours that they work, anything of the sort. Uh, But to move on to states like Minnesota, they do want to relax child labor laws a little bit more. Uh, Minnesota lawmakers are proposing a bill that will make it easier for construction companies to employ 16 and 17 year olds. Uh, they call it the Paid Youth Trades Employment Opportunity Act, which is good framing. I know that when it comes to naming bills or anything like that, there's there's going to be these tricks that a lot of the times are used to make it seem like it's, oh, the freedom. Like if it's child labor, let's go mm-hmm. there. I would probably name a bill the the uh, the Freedom to Be Employed Without Government Interference Act. So it makes it sound a little less scary than being like, we're going to throw our children in construction sites act. Right. You know? Even though that's probably more accurate. Um, it's, they say that they're going to give a lot more opportunities to younger folks to get into the industry 
and I've been in the industry my whole life. It's a good career for me. Um, you know, I think each employer does have an obligation or responsibility to make sure they're not hiring anybody either, you know? So we have a pretty rigorous hiring process. This the, the rigorous hiring process that they're probably referring to is, are you going to be getting paid pennies on the dollar? You know, just, they just mm-hmm. want to pay less. Which I guess for for cost cutting measures to, we would want starting businesses or anything to invoke the economy, but it's like, what happened to let kids be kids? Have you, have have you heard that? You know, I have heard that. Yeah. And that's, you you know, it doesn't make sense to me if you're being logically consistent, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. And then to move on to, uh, to Nebraska. Yeah. It was Nebraska. Uh, The youth minimum wage is what they're, phrasing it basically there were was a vote by nebraskan voters tony um to raise the state's minimum wage from nine dollars to 10.50 an hour starting on january 1st of this year and then that rate would incrementally increase until it reaches 15 dollars per hour till january 1st of 2026 now you would think they'd be like you would they would take their l and just be like oh we'll get them next time you know, uh, what they did instead was um, LB 15, as introduced by, by Senator Tom Brees. Um, instead, he would set a separate minimum wage for employees aged 14 to 17 at nine dollars uh, through 2023, increasing. Twenty five cents per year until it reaches ten dollars per hour in 2026. So essentially just creating another class of workers being like, oh, the minimum wage, that that that's for adults. Now you get your own minimum wage. Just so, in the interest and, of these corporations. And just by looking at that one paragraph you just read, so I'm seeing, you know, age, I'm sorry, employees age 14 to 17 will start at $9 through 2023, increasing 25 cents per year until reaching ten dollars in 2026 essentially that's telling me that they are getting a one dollar raise within no in like what three to four years they'll get yeah, like a one dollar raise so it, it it's one of those things that's wholeheartedly ridiculous um just going based off the fact that let kids be kids or protect the kids it really is oh we protect kids from books question mark protect bit kids from other other ways of life you know like it it doesn't particular when people talk about let kids be kids and they like phrase it that way and they're then going on to talk of other issues that aren't child labor or things that they pretend are issues like mm-hmm. attacking minorities which is so dumb but it's really weird to see when you don't when you see the let kids be kids commentators not talk about child labor and you would think that would ruin some credibility for these these folks but at the end of the day it is more about fear mongering it is it is more about attacking minority communities than actually like trying to protect kids well totally because going back to what you're saying yeah exhibit b like school safety you know yeah Uh, but yeah, it, there's just been so much child labor bill of regulations that have been rolled back in the interest of making sure that corporations have a different wage pool, to, a different group of people, a different pool to pay a little bit less money so that instead of, you know, raising worker wages, they would just hire out younger people. And, you know, they do the same thing with uh, with um, undocumented workers as well. Um, when it comes to like construction or anything like that, you'll probably see them get paid below minimum wage and then threatened with uh, deportation or anything like that uh, if they don't take the the ass wages that they're given. Right. So, it- so like two things have like have been in my mind ever since we've been talking about this. Well, one, yeah, two things. One of which, which was like really recent, was um, going back to what you said about let kids be kids. I mean. If you were like, if someone were to ask me, oh, what did you do when you were like 16, 15, 16, 17? I'm like, oh, I was like at school or I was playing, I was playing video games. I was doing stuff with my friends, hanging out, playing basketball, playing sports, going to the movies, you know, just having fun, you know, just being a kid. 
maybe at 17 going to 18, I might have like maybe a part time job, but you know, that was it. Like, I feel like actually, actually almost becoming an adult, like, well, the age of being an adult of 18, that's when I practically had a first, my first part time job. Yeah. And now I'm thinking back to let's say when I'm, when I'm like maybe 60, 70, and I talk to my, maybe nieces or nephews or my grandchildren's children. I, and I said, Oh, what did you do when you were 16 or 17? Or what are you doing now since you're 16 or 17? Oh, I'm working for this company at like $9 an hour. I'm like, excuse me, you're, you're 15 going, maybe going on 16 and you're already working. Like, and this goes back to, to the second thing I was thinking about. I remember I used to work at this, uh, my dad's office. He works like in a government building and I would see these pictures of like kids, maybe ages from like, uh, let's say eight to 12 in like construction work or mining, you know, and I'm like, what you're telling me now is like, it's like, it's like, we're almost essentially going back to where we like to the 1910s, 1920s, like way back, like years ago. And I'm like, why are we doing this? Like, I'm pretty sure we came up with laws to prevent that from happening. But right now, from what you're telling me, it looks like we're just backstepping, like backtracking back to that point of time. Yeah. You know, it's crazy too, is that um, on top of not just like bringing, bringing more children into the work pool, it is also, there's been a couple of bills that have been brought up where it's wanting to um, make sure that kids have uh, taxpayer funded lunches or free lunches. So like, mm -hmm. um, I framed it both ways because right-wingers for the most part be like, oh, it's never really free. And it's like, for ultimately it's, it. Free lunches in school for children who can't afford it or maybe rely on the school to get their only meal of the day. I was be, actually on that on that end. Yeah, it, it was actually, on there. I actually got those free lunches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they there have been Republicans that have been actively like against fighting, like fighting against uh school lunches. You even see uh prominent conservative con commentators like Ben Shapiro uh, saying that, oh my God, they got this particular region got uh, free school lunches. And this is why that's a terrible thing. Oh, and God. so you, wow. you just, you like legitimately have these people making these arguments just because I can't believe my taxes are going to feeding children and, or, you know, I, I care about children and letting kids be kids, but like free school lunches or I don't want any money coming out of my pocket. Like when, mo when people are like, oh my God, I can't believe my taxes are going to that. They don't show any of that outrage when it's the military on the industry, the military industrial complex, where if we cut our military budget in half, then we would still be the biggest military in the world. They like, people will say, oh my God, I can't believe my taxes is going for that. And like blow a fuse over free mm. school lunches. And then they like <laughs> ignore completely like the Pentagon budget or like no some way. fighter jets like going out of some fighter jets like not working and then us losing like three billion dollars a trillion there's there's a story uh, a couple of weeks back but no way did you just tell me that they're wait just the thought of free lunch is just like explode had just exploded their minds no way i mean it's their me job i refuse like, to believe that uh it, it is their <laughs> job to it's their job to you know talk those things down because the less taxes that go towards you know good things then they can keep and they can keep fear mongering over like, oh my God, can you believe your taxes are going to the military, even though they push for those same military budget, like fundings or uh, illegal wars or anything of the sort. It's mm -hmm. just insane to me, but uh, to move on to the next one, uh, there is a quicker story that is going to be about how this CEO particularly celebrated a worker uh, who sold their family dog and demanded that he returned back to office. Oh uh, yeah, you told me this, and I'm like still it, like like shocked. You just by just by even reading that title, it, like, it, it doesn't surprise me. me. There's been so much demonization of work from home ever since like returned office. My theory is it's because, oh my God, commercial real estate and we pay for all these leases and we need commercial real estate bubble to not pop. Uh, that's my theory on it. But again, that's like just speculation. Uh, so in a virtual town hall last week, the CEO of Utah-based digital marketing and technology company is forcing return, employ return to office he questioned the motives of those who disagreed and it's like, oh, you're you're probably going to the quiet quit. And <laughs> quiet quit. just 
it, it is bonkers because in this article there the ceo i'm trying to find it over here control f so before we move on could we um just like really briefly touch on what quiet quitting is real uh real quick yes because i know that's something that i've like i've I guess it's something that I did in the past. I didn't know that it was actually called quiet quitting. And after learning about what that was and, you know, contributing to that to what I was doing in the past, I, it just made me laugh knowing that I was doing something like that. Um, but Ian, I'm sure, you know, like the proper definition to quiet quitting, um, if you don't mind giving us a yeah, no, no, no. So, synopsis well, about it. From what I understand, uh, and this is going off the top of my head. So like I can probably pull it up, but I do know it, You're good. it's basically to sum it up doing the bare minimum at your job. Right. Don't go, don't mm -hmm. excel. Do not uh, go under, but like the bare minimum to just not get fired mm -hmm. is how I understand it. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Which is how, I mean... like, which is how, like, it personally, I am of the yeah. belief that that if you are not passionate about your job or what it is you're getting paid money to do, then excelling at it would just be something that would justify you asking for more money. So in that instance, let's say that like it, it's an employment contract with your work, with your, with your, your boss, whether it's uh, polite to overperform or not, like this is what your contract says that you are supposed to do. So mm -hmm. any expectations beyond or otherwise is just going to be something that you take on, whether it's like stress cost or, um, monetary cost because you're not getting that raise then at that point I would say that it, it is something that is worth looking into for you because if you're not getting monetary raise if it is giving you more stress and taking away time taking time away from you then there shouldn't be anything particularly wrong with uh, just meeting the expectations that yeah are going to what that you are expecting to need no i i agree like because like, as you mentioned if you are doing more than what is expected of you with like without any sort of like like incentive any more incentive than that then what's the point you know i might as well just be doing the not the bare minimum but like enough just to get by just so that it shows that fired. hey yeah exactly just to show that hey i am working i'm doing my job if you want me to do more i'm more than happy to do it but there has to be another form of of, a, of incentive to it, you know, bigger pay or higher pay. All right, let's go for it. You're going to give me like a $2 raise. All right, fine. I'm all for it. You know, give me more work, you know, I'll, I'll do it. But if you just, it's funny because um, I talked to you about this like a while ago. This actually happened to me in my uh, previous um, job that I work for. I'm not going to mention the name. Um, that's like, they're a great company and all. They're, they're really, they're really fun. They're good at what they're doing. I guess it's just policies that just, I guess they just can't, like like navigate away from but anyways um i worked for this one company getting paid i think 20 mostly 22 an hour and then i've been working there for about four or five months we'll say and then i was told and i was my center director asked me to come into their office to come speak with them spoke with them they are they were talking about a new higher position being like a senior position i'm like oh senior position that sounds great you know there has to be like a higher pay the first thing that they told me about the position, they're like, okay, here's this position. There's no pay increase. You'll be getting more, essentially more of a workload, a little more stress. And then Ian, as soon as they told me that there was no like incentive to it, my mind just shut off after that. I I just stopped paying attention. I told them, yeah, I will think about it. But at the end of the day, I already made up my mind. Um, I just told them that, yeah, I'm not going to take it. And it's funny. After I told them no um i want to say two or three other um co-workers of mine who did take the position they come up they came up to me and asked why didn't you take it not 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 in a mean way you know but they were just genuinely curious like why I didn't take it and and what did i tell them i was just being truthful i i was like you know just to be blunt about it it was a pay you know not much of a pay increase so why would i you know as you mentioned Go oh, through more yes. stress. Go, yeah, yeah. Why? Why should I overstress myself for a job that you know? Although I am passionate for, um, why would I stress myself out more for a job without you know that additional incentive? You know, which because you know, 
incentives are always nice. Getting paid is always nice. More money is always nice, but it's sometimes necessary. I mean, yeah, our, yeah, our, exactly. apartment, our apartment in Nashville was our studio apartment in Nashville in 2019, 2018, where I lived in the living room and he lived in the room. That mm-hmm. was 1600 a month, right? Yeah. In Nashville on, on that's not including like, utilities, and, by the way. That's just the rent. Yeah, no, no, no. That's just the rent. And that's a studio mm-hmm. apartment. Um on okay. I'm just trying to on on how much money was your was your first couple jobs there? Because uh, mine see. was mine was like 18, I think. Let's see, I'm just trying to remember. Um we'll say we'll go about we'll go around that, like 15, 18. Yeah. Yeah. Because I did have like I had another I had like two jobs, you know, to to um to pay off the rent. Um the first job actually I could have just done that alone, but the second job was more for like like a reassurance kind of thing, you know, like I'll just keep the money like for myself or put into stocks or yeah. whatever, invest it or something. But well, uh, actually I'm yeah. actually I'm I'm curious though, since you mentioned our apartment back in Nashville, did you happen to go it's fine if you did, I'm just curious. Did you check to see if like their rental pricing has like gone up like for their studio not recently i mean like i i just kind of have that expectation that it, it's probably like 1800 now in 2023 and maybe like 1900 but i haven't checked it I, i'm yikes i can check it on another screen you check it on another screen make sure okay. i got the name uh but i want to actually quickly touch on this first uh before no, for while, yeah. while you're looking it up uh just to, think. going off the topic um, something I wanted to mention when you were talking about how you're like, oh, why would I do more work for up like not even that long, much of a pay that shows to that just goes to show the connection between like, if like you were working for a bigger company and you saw the company profits go up most of the time as a regular worker, low level worker, you'll be like that. That means nothing to me because you're not seeing an increase in your pay. They're just like, oh, we made $2 billion this year. Oh, we made 3 million, 30 million or anything like that. Any profits anything that they've made in excess this isn't revenue what they've made outside of what they've expected to make an increase profit and i I say it like that because there's a lot of nitpicky individuals that will be like oh my god revenue profit they will conflate the two and revenue is the money that is brought in profit is that what is brought in in surplus Mm -hmm. uh and there is just no connection between the profit itself when it comes to like low level employees because the only people celebrating that is the shareholders that'll that that's the last thing that i did want to touch on uh to yeah. sum up like the work from home ceos pay and like labor and different things gotcha how how much was the how gotcha. much did the the rent was so it looks like not much have changed. I'm seeing like eight, eighteen, eighteen, thirty-two, yeah, like a thousand. Yes. Eight, that, yeah. That so n- not much has changed. I expected to be like somewhere within like, let's say, yeah, like nineteen hundred. No, but yeah, going back, you said it was like sixteen hundred when we were living there. So yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, you pretty much hit the hit the dot, man. <laughs> okay, so to finally touch on my last point, um, the last story that I wanted to talk on was going to be uh, Trump on the Nelk Boys podcast. I believe it's the North Place podcast. No, it's the Full Send podcast. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he was on the Full Send podcast, and uh, he, of course, said his like classic Trump things. Um, classic Trump things. Election, <laughs> blah blah blah. A lot of POS things that I'm just like, bro. Like he, he's funny though. He is funny. He was disastrous for the country, but he is very funny, and he is miles funnier than. I would say he's he's one of the funniest, like, but horrible. Um. Anyways, and I, 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 I uh, before I bef- before you press play, um, remind me again. Like, this is the first time I'm hearing this wrong person. Is he, is he like on the like Democrat Republican or like? Do what you is think that Donald Trump would go on a podcast with someone that will not stroke his ego? Question mark. True. Good point. Good point. I, just, I guess are, I missed that part. <laughs> they sucked him off. Sorry to <laughs> be explicit. I watched the entire podcast, but uh, I wanted to cover this uh, quick 30 second clip. I don't know how they are with copyright, so I'm not going to play it, but I will say that uh, Trump actually pretty much railed on DeSantis over here. And, the, um, and Ron DeSantis, for 
for you, Tony, you probably don't know this, but he's the 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 governor of Florida who was very much like the superstar of uh, anti-vax like uh, mm-hmm. sentiment and COVID and all that. So he is the most charismatic version uh, of like a, an establishment Republican politician. He does his best Trump impression and he's the only contender that is that might take down Trump in a Republican primary. Uh, so like if they choose to opt out of Trump, then they'll probably go with DeSantis. It's probably not looking like that's going to be the case now. I could have told you that when I saw his uh, Florida debate for governor over the last year. Uh, he's just not a good debater and he won't punch back. But Trump says, uh, to go to the tweet, Trump says uh, DeSantis's handling of COVID was reckless and irresponsible. He had more deaths in almost every country. It's so interesting that he's uh, going in that direction when uh, his criticisms of DeSantis, because Mm -hmm. he is leaning into the fact that he did Operation uh, Warp Speed and getting vaccines uh, into our hands a lot sooner than most most other countries would have. And that's that's a big W on Trump. Uh, I will be honest about that. Uh, It making sure that the vaccine was accessible and being able to take it, especially at that time, like I remember it was just like a rush to get it. But like the fact that we definitely do that to do that as quick like get that sorted out as quickly as possible is pretty good um that being said he he does steer away from he does toe the line between like being pro-vaccine anti-vaccine uh because he knows that that's where the base is comma however i uh he is leaning into this criticism he had more deaths in almost every than almost every country in florida because he took a very, uh, Ron DeSantis did take a very hands-off approach when it comes to shutting down businesses or anything like that, because of course uh, the virus did shut down a lot of different locations. And he was just like, Let, let's just live and let live. And normally, I don't believe that Trump really would have a, a problem with that because he ultimately wanted to reopen businesses and everything and all that too pretty soon it was uh, but i i will say that um kind of painting that like distinction among other different attacks that he's given against desantis like he is showing his political instincts here and he's probably going to steer away from it as soon as it gets to the general election uh but he's he's, he's going to take things personal too like they biden is miles better however there are better policy decisions that I believe that another candidate would be able to make other than him. That being said, it's an attack that Trump has used against DeSantis, along with very potent attacks like Ron DeSantis wants to cut Social Security and Medicare and just pounds on that hard, which is not popular within the Republican Party because they, of course, want entitlement cuts. They Mm -hmm. want to reform Social Security and Medicare. They wanted to cut it so that when we're older, we're getting less amount in money as opposed to getting rid of the the cap on Social Security, Um, the Social Security tax, which is the fact that anyone making like over $130,000 a year is is paying into Social Security the same amount as someone making $10 million a year, $100 million a year, a billion dollars a year, which is ridiculous. Uh, That'll be it for my portion of the the new segment we will move on to you as soon as we hop back in here it's gonna i'm just gonna i'll I'll just get permission back and i need a host share my screen too i already i I already did that do you give me permission oh perfect yes we're not on zoom pro yet guys i'm sorry (laughs) (laughs) what is that well how much is i I didn't even know there was a zoom pro hold on you just blew my mind just now Oh, Zoom Pro. When did that happen? Uh, annual. Basic is free. That's what we got. Pro. Oh, it's fifteen a month. Business night twenty. I don't even pay for price YouTube twenty. Premium. You know what I do for YouTube uh, Premium? What do you do? I pay for it because that's what's legal. Dang. So I I'm know. like, I don't know if I should even say this or what I'm using just to avoid that. 
Oh, you don't I, ever use. You're saying you use an ad block. Yeah, I know. No, no well, it's not really. Well, I, I don't. I I actually go the difficult way and just create a new email. Well, look at you. I actually went the route of downloading this one app. Let's call. Um, I don't know if uh, yeah. iPhone. If it's Sketch. Uh, yeah. Huh. They're not sponsoring us, so it's no, sad. they're not sponsors. This is just essentially what I use just to, you know, override those whole ads, and I can. I don't like, think we're allowed to. I don't think we're, I don't think we're allowed to say it. No, okay, we could add that out then. <laughs> All right, fine. I won't say it just so we won't get in trouble. But anyways, what were we talking about before? Your turn to do news <laughs> talk. My my turn to do news topics. Doing your stories. Oh. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so we got most of the current events out of the way. But however, I do want to still talk about it because I did see two videos, actually one video that you might have actually, seen. Actually, three couple videos. Days. Three videos? Oh, what's the third one? I don't know. Oh, fucker. <laughs> I thought you were serious. Uh, anyways, there were two videos. One video I'm sure you must have seen, Ian. Um, it had to do with Marjorie Green Taylor. Is that her name? Your oh, my God. Person? No, that's the only You're... thing that I didn't know. I know. She said something ridiculous and got kicked out of the chamber. I... Your okay, favorite so this... person in the world. <laughs> no, 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 no. So you would think, well, I, I'm usually on top of this stuff, but this week has been like just back and forth. So I haven't kept up with all the stories, but I did read a headline slash saw a youtube thumbnail slash you, you know the girl so i've seen, yeah. seen that something happened with regarding her but i haven't i don't know exactly what what she said so i'm excited so so i would play the youtube clip but i don't kind of don't want to get it. in trouble no you, oh, you want to play it okay well you know what why just, I let this ad play, is it is it like a major news network it's from nbc if anything yeah I can we're good an article we're good. yeah oh, okay good. sounds good we got about five seconds left at the ad so it's Pretty essentially, in a nutshell, she just called someone a liar, and a pretty much that like. Well, I have the video clip right here, so let me. Yeah, go just play, play the clip and pause where you want to make a commentary. Okay, I have it right here. Let me know if you guys can see it. Are you, you sharing audio? See it. Oh, good call, man. Good call. You're like we're the, professionals. You are on it, man. Wow. Okay, there we go. Much better. Okay, let me know if you guys can hear this. Well, I, I, my I am you guys. You guys is me. How many more people do we have to watch die every single day in America? How many more young people Pause do it. we have to see die? How there you go. You got a comment to say? I agree. That I agree wholeheartedly with her. How many kids? How many more kids have to die? I agree. Mm -hmm. But I'm. I, I, I don't too. want to let her cook anymore. You don't want to let her cook anymore. <laughs> well, like I said, in the end, she pretty much just calls someone. Uh, oh, no, that's, that's name. Come, no, let's keep going. Keep, keep going. Pausing. Keep going. Okay. The pausing cool. is creative cool. use. Teenagers. How many more parents cry themselves to sleep at night if they can even sleep because their child overdosed on fentanyl? How long are you going to continue this outrage, complete outrage, where China is poisoning America's children? poisoning our teenagers, poisoning our young people. How long are you going to let this go on? Congresswoman, let me assure you that we're not letting it go on. We are fighting. This is where it happens. No, I reclaim my time. You're a liar. You are letting this go on, and the numbers oh, well. prove it. So essentially, after that point, that just, well, you'll see. It just you shortens her, about the facts, her time to talk. Secretary Mayorkas. While you that's live in that's denial, that's over. sit over there with this attitude that you're doing everything Let's right, you stand. are killing Americans yeah. with your policies. And that is a fact. Your policies are killing people, over 300 yeah. Americans a day. Over 300. Let me just see it looks like this might outrageous. be the full clip. Let me ask you another question. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Let me skip to this part. Here. Actually. Uh, the, the ranking member. Actually, no. Guys, here it is. You know, we can disagree. But right. just the fact that we have people watching uh you don't have to call uh a witness a liar and and i just excuse me does ranking member have a point of order well no, just like actually i want you to take the word uh, of the speaker down so uh, I, I mean but i need to explain why. so the gentleman does have a is yes. raising a point, yes. point of order so the point is, uh, in raising this point of order. And Joe Lay's time will be restored. You know, we have a history of being. Pause. Who's she speaking with? 
What's the uh, she was she was speaking with uh towards Mayor Mayorkas over here, and it looks like this is the f- not the clip need more that... context than that. So this is like not the clip that I watched. Essentially, the whole big thing is like what they're talking about is like you're a liar part. What Marjorie told to Mayor Mayorkas, sorry, I'm probably butchering the name. I'm sorry, but. After she said that, they're all trying to like, you know, strike that from the record or like remove her word or something like that. And, you know, of course, she's trying to fight back. And then they they go over some regulations, some rules, and they say that, you know, they you cannot like call a person out or essentially just call them a liar, like tarnish their character or something like that. Damn, I'm kind of and, disappointed. She said worse things in the past. So yeah. I, like just calling someone a liar, even if the witness was a victim, like I... I don't have the context. Even if the victim was like a witness, she said, "That's insane." Like, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I right. Know the well, like I said, this isn't necessarily the clip that I saw on TikTok. I wish I could find it, but I couldn't find it. Um, but I just think just it's funny, funny because she said worse things about face lasers, and it's it's also funny because um, I saw some comments on TikTok, and they're like, "Well, at the end of the day, may or not may mayarkis." I want to say that's how you pronounce his name. That they're gonna like not let the woman speak anymore or something like in a more professional sense and everyone at combo was like yes that has to be done at all times just don't let her speak anymore and it was just so funny yeah. to me how they're I mean, all like... like for her to get caught up on something like this if this is what makes her not able to that that would be well fun. not not only that i'm pretty sure she like you said she has said like worse things in the past I, I don't know the full specifics to it but i know that whenever i hear marjorie green's name around it's like either she's done something or has said something that a lot of people disagree with or find like, and to put it nicely stupid or something. Um, but yeah, like I said, you've, you've heard of like worse things that she said before. So yeah, I can imagine like what other worst things she said. That's like to you, this is like almost nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was just like, numb. I was just like, what? <laughs> Which is terrible. I didn't that. <laughs> but yeah, that's um something that I saw on TikTok the other day was kind of made me laugh. How everyone was like, yeah, you know, good, good on Mayar- Mayarkis to not let her speak. And I'm pretty sure everyone is like in agreement that we should not never let, never let this woman speak again, which is like kind of funny to me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. because of her policies and it's just wild. But moving on, you no. wanted to <laughs> talk about the Breath of the Wild sequel known as Tears of the Kingdom. Yes. Yes, I do, actually, since that is coming up, not even in a month and less yeah i'm actually really surprised it's it's currently april the 21st so yeah and it's coming out on let me get that up right here on may 12th so so like like i said like a less than a month away from now and you know what i'm not sure if you've heard any news regarding the game even before like the trailer was released apparently people were saying well let me backtrack you know how uh, pause, hold that hold that thought because i do want to say something before i forget it because it's actually okay, go for it. if go for it. you are if you are a nintendo switch online member you can save a lot of money on this game by getting the nintendo voucher uh through the nintendo switch online basically you would pay a hundred dollars or nine ninety nine dollars and 98 cents actually to get this game pass voucher for two different games one of those games being you can get a digital copy of tears of the kingdom and you can use that other voucher for another game so essentially you would be saving a solid 30 dollars on this game now wait i did the math wrong you would be salt yeah. you would be saving 20 dollars on this game so instead of stay, paying i think it's like 70 for the game now instead of paying 70 you'd be going for 50 yep for a brand new game, but it's a digital copy, and a lot of people like want the collector's editions in the artwork, so I don't blame you if you do. But what is it's super helpful? I'm definitely going to clip that for a TikTok. But what is that uh voucher you're speaking of? I, this is the first I'm hearing about it. Is this something that Nintendo said, or you just like, like how did you hear about it? Uh, I th- I think I actually heard about it from a TikTok at first. Like I've seen one other TikTok since then about it, but definitely not enough people are talking about it. Like the the fact yeah, that the like voucher uh it just gets you two free games, digital games. So I would be yeah. You should what do if you have if, are you do you care about if your copy is <laughs> digital or physical? Because like for the most part, I'm very physical games person, but I was never into Zelda 2 too much growing up. So I don't mind mm-hmm. if it's digital. Okay. For Zelda 2, considering it's gonna be like a huge game. I'm just gonna go for a physical version that That's I can fair, at least yeah. save some space on my on my switch, you know, because it's like it's the the older, like the the 
what's what I'm trying to say, the like the first generation models, you know, the ones that first came out um, when Breath of the Wild, the first Breath of the Wild came out. So my Switch is like, what, one, two, three, four, five, like more than five years old. Well, whenever the Switch came out, it's like one of the first ones ever was shipped out. That's um, cool. Yeah, and actually, I think I sent it, I sent it this to you uh, a while ago that my Switch got like you know how in the Xbox 360 they had like the red ring of death. Yeah, yeah. So my Switch all of a sudden just got like the orange screen of death. It was essentially just like oh, the red ring of death. Dude, death. I remember, you remember that. You remember that, right? I remember yeah. only because I was going through, uh, I was going through my the old comments that I had left in my account. And mm -hmm. I was like curious of where I, I don't leave a lot of comments. So like, I was just like scrolling up. I was like, how far can I go? And like, how many comments have I <laughs> that's, that's how I found it. No, though, that's how you found it. Okay. Yeah, no, it's yeah, just and, straight up. <laughs> yeah. And then when I read that comment, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. My switch did suffer through that. And so, um, yeah, what I did to fix that was like, I just sent it over to Nintendo or whatever oh, was able to fix it. And they got a fix out of way like a week. So I was Daddy Reggie. Yeah. Yeah, Daddy Reggie, Daddy Sakurai, both of them fixed it for me. They both gave me my, <laughs> personally. They both, gave my, they both personally gave my Switch like the care it needed, just so it can like get rid of that orange screen of death. But um, yeah, I was I think I was pretty much like switchless for like a week, and so I can't remember if I was like bitchless, <laughs> bro, man. <laughs> Don't call me out like that, man. How dare you? <laughs> but um, yeah, switchless. And quote unquote bitchless <laughs> for for that week, and um, for that week, for that week, just just for that week only. Still, yeah, but yeah, I remember. Actually, no, I can't remember. If I was gaming anything during that time, but I was able to like at least pass some time without having a switch. Um, to either at least watch an anime or just playing other games on like arcades, whatever. But um, anyways, back to what I was trying to say. Um, Breath of the Wild. Actually, no, I want to I want to do another backtrack. Remember how yeah, when, back so. in the Wii U, um, what's it called? Smash Brothers for Wii U. When that came out, everyone was excited for it. Everyone was playing for it. We, you and I hung out. We played that game a lot. And then the announcement came you, that they were. We and you hung out. We and you. We were like, no, yeah. that's for the Wii. What am I trying to say? I'm getting my consoles mixed up. Yeah. So when they announced the, the. What's it called? The Ultimate Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for Nintendo Switch. I'm not sure if you were or heard about this, but I know I did. A lot of people were speculating that it was just, or pretty much claimed that this was just like a DLC or expansion to Smash Brothers for a Wii U because it's essentially like the same thing. I'm not sure if you ever heard that rumor or that um, concept that was like brought about when the Ultimate was announced. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And so when I heard those, I'm like, why why would people think this is a dlc clearly you can see by the trailers it's it looks like graphically it looks better than the, than the wii u version there are more characters there are more stages there are more everyone things that you can here. do exactly what the game stated everyone is here you got snake snake is here you got or i'm sorry snake was back toon Link was back who else was back wolf was back was pretty much like the big character that everyone wanted back but anyways the point i'm trying to get is that a lot of people have you know, said that the ult ultimate was like the DLC version of Smash or Wii U, which obviously wasn't true. My point I'm trying to get is that now with Breath of the Wild 2 coming out, a lot of people are, people are saying that Breath of the Wild 2 is essentially another like DLC, another expansion to Breath of the Wild, which is, you know, after seeing the recent trailer that came out like a few weeks, like a week ago or a few days ago, no, I personally don't believe it's DLC, not even... Yeah. Even watched that trailer, I was like, no, this is DLC. This is definitely like a new game. And yet there are still people, from what I read in the comment section, people are still claiming this is still DLC. I'm like, no, bro, this is not DLC. Like, I played the DLC for Breath of the Wild. Like, I think they had two uh, two DLCs they had, and that was... I feel like Nintendo yeah. will always have this problem until they upgrade to a 4K system, which is probably, due to the rumors, it's probably going to be within the next year or two. But, like, I... it's it's only because people are like, picture not clear me think that the quality of this game is exactly the same as the other one and it's not not to, be, not to be a nintendo defender because like it's like it's fine it's just it's just this it's the fact that they don't have good graphics period point blank i mean Breath oh of yeah Wild, when you compare it to like the like when you're comparing it to the xbox and playstation even like pc switch is like 
like inferior when it comes to like graphic design. It's definitely inferior. Um, not you to say think that, that it's OLED, bad. they would have upgraded, but like no, it was just like the the screen itself was upgraded, mm-hmm. not even like the graphics card or anything like that. Yeah, and, like, the I'm screen not itself was just about bigger. this stuff, but like 4K seems to be like the standard. So I yeah, it's it's typically the standard. It's something that I believe most consoles have. I, I don't know if X. Uh, which one do you have? The Xbox One, right? Or yeah, I have the Xbox One. Xbox One. I don't know if that has 4K uh, that has or 4K, like yeah. that is okay. So that has 4K. I'm pretty sure the PS5 has 4K. Uh, let me do a quick Google PS4, search. I'm sure had four, PS4 and Xbox. Well, if the PS4 have 4K, then I'm sure the PS5 has. Yeah. So so many. Yeah, Nintendo Switch is like Xbox yeah. 360 level of graphics. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people have mentioned this, and I do agree with it that Nintendo Switch is like just a generation behind. You know, so as you mentioned, they're like on the 360 PS3 level, you know, and I mean, like I said, I agree with it. Do, do I say that that's a bad thing? Not really, because I still like their games, you know, yeah. I enjoy playing it. So, but although owning after playing a PS5 the other day, it is, it is pretty fun. I'll admit. But anyways, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to go back to the breath of walk is I keep going off topic. I'm sorry. No, dude, why don't apologize? <laughs> this is the fun of it. Cool, cool. I just like to have, you know, consistency or be like consistent to one topic, but I guess I just drag on to something else. So I apologize. No, I actually want to jump back to Super Smash Brothers because like chances are next year there's gonna be a new switch. And this is the longest gap we've gone but between like a Smash game. I didn't even know that because we still play Smash all the time. That uh, is true, actually. I think that my theory is that I think that they're going to go and everywhere is here. Because then everywhere so is here? Every single stage from every previous game. And oh. uh, it's going to be a deluxe edition of Ultimate because they can't just cut characters. They're going to have probably, I'll, I'll go five DLC characters, but that's it. Maybe less than that. Maybe like three, but everywhere is here. I feel like. Now, here's the. Now, now here's the thing that I want to bring up since you mentioned everywhere is here because it's reminded me of what Mario Kart 8 is doing. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is doing. Um, you know, they're bringing back old tracks. They're bringing back... Um, I'm not sure... was. I'm pretty sure Berta was in previous iterations of the game and I guess they're bringing her back again. Um, I wonder how people will react for... Not for the new uh, iteration of Smash Bros, but for Ultimate... They release DLC again, but not characters, but more like past stages, you know? So past stages of Final Destination from like 64, Melee, Brawl, or um, Pokemon you know, Floats that sounds from, just disappointing from Melee. enough for it to be likely to happen, where it's just like, <laughs> oh, you can still play Ultimate on this new Switch, but instead of giving you a new game, we're just getting you DLC of the stages. Yeah. That's like that's all you're gonna get. That would be the yes. most disappointing thing, like no new characters still. And that for that reason, I think your your option is probably the most realistic, which I'm actually like dreading now. And to be honest, I'm pretty sure I'll be one of those that will end up buying those because I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, of shoot. course, like, we're oh, still gonna Pokey, buy it. <laughs> Pokey Floats is back. The old school final des- final destination is back. I can mod master hand into the og final destination and 64 stage with enhanced graphics all right let's do it man i will totally be on both for that but that's how nintendo is you know i love them all but some things the things they do is just why like someone said it best in a comment section that i read like they're, they're they take like one step like one giant step forward and then they somehow take like two steps back and it's yeah it's like a roller coaster with them you love them you love them for what they do, but at the same time, it's like a love-hate relationship. Although for me, it's more like a love. It's more like 80%, 80% love, 20% hate. But yeah, not to say that I'm a Nintendo hater. What's it called? Hater or hater. Like, <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. I wouldn't call myself that. And even though I've had almost every console they've released since I was a kid. Crazy. Yeah. What was the, the first Nintendo console you had? First one I remember is, I mean, like I had the Super Nintendo, but like the first one that was significant was the Nintendo 64. I always, I always had like I had a Game Boy Color, like I was like six. Like I, I played games young. Gotcha. Yeah, no, same here. Mine was um the Super Nintendo. I want to say maybe the Nintendo Entertainment System at one point, but it was mainly the Super Nintendo, then 64, and then 
GameCube, Wii. Yeah, pretty much. I've, I've had them all. And yeah. But anyways, back to the topic at hand about Breath of the Wild, which I'm trying to get back to. Um, yeah, a lot of people are still claiming that this is still DLC. As I mentioned before, we saw the trailers. I am a firm believer that it's not. It is legitimately a new Breath of the Wild you know, game, new addition to the series. And one thing I want to talk about is I was going over some of the the story, like the lore of Zelda, because I was just interested one morning and I was like, the lore. Exactly. And I was like, where does it all begin? How does the story start off? And as a kid, or yeah, as a kid, you will think like the first game of a game will be like, you know, the first origin of the story. I was dead wrong because there was there's actually oh a no timeline. the timeline's so fucked <laughs> no the t- you know what I'm I'm actually about to pull it up right now so you can see how much like I was so confused actually not confused but just shocked with this timeline let's see here this is you right not, like a Zelda stand and like I I heard that it's like just fucking confusing so it's like no apparently this it's... game is gonna lead into Skyward Sword is the rumor really I have not heard of that all I, I know is that from this video. timeline and apparently this is the official timeline. The game itself, not the game itself, but the story itself starts out with Skyward Sword. Yeah. Um, you have an unknown character who, you know, is obviously Link. And then you have uh, Hylia, which is like the goddess. And then, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Zelda, which, you know, all the characters are there. And then from there, they, bel- I'm not sure where in the timeline it happens, but they, you know, they defeat Ganondorf. Or no, no, I'm sorry. They, they defeat someone called Demise. And apparently after defeating demise it releases a curse where they have to repeat the events over and over and over again so essentially they're like they're like in this loop where they have to like you know fight evil and then start over again fight evil which a lot of people say it's like pretty sad pretty tragic and you know i agree you're just doing the same thing over and over again which is why we have so many like different links different zeldas different um probably different ganons not really sure but that's pretty much how why there's like so many Zelda, so many Link characters. But, but after looking at this timeline, we can see that Skyward Sword is pretty much where the story starts off. Then we go to the Minish Cap, four swords, Orcarina time. And before I show the rest of this convoluted timeline, I just want to point out that Orcarina of Time was my very first Zelda game that I ever played. And Man. honestly, it's like I, I would have been in it, but I never finished it. He never finished it? No, neither did I. I had two reasons. One was because I was confused. I was like 10, 9 or 10, and I was like confused how to, how to like do one level, and so I just gave up. But then I went back into it again, and then I couldn't beat this one level. Oh, no, I was scared to go in this one level because I'm not sure if you remember this, Ian. There's like a level there where, where I think you're an adult. I know. I just remember like... playing it very briefly. That is literally like my only memory. I was more of a, I think, Majora's Mask, but like not even, I never finished any Zelda game until almost Twilight Princess. Uh, oh, no, okay. actually my first completed Zelda game was probably Breath of the Wild. Um, I got to the last stage in Twilight Princess when I was like 13 or something like that, and I just never... No, okay, so what happened was I instead of finishing it, I there was a way to get uh there was a way to do like a little like wrong, wrong thing for like graphics changes in Super Smash oh. Brothers and modding Super Smash Brothers and the way to do that was to overwrite your Twilight Princess save file and it was one what gigabyte. The, the the real OGs will remember. But um then you got an extra channel on there and then you could use that to like, you know, do do stuff that is not is frowned upon. Ape of fuck. I have never heard of that, but actually going back to what you said about Breath yeah, of the Wild, Ocarina Breath of the Wild being like your first like Zelda game to complete, right? You completed Breath of the Wild, correct? I I, I didn't I finished it. Finished it. Okay. That's, I didn't get the that's DLC. Good enough. I didn't I didn't play the DLC. That that's fine. Really as long game. as as long as like Breath of the Wild. No, it's good. Like as long as Breath of the Wild was like your, you know, your first game, then that's all you need to know because I just want to add on that. Although I played Orcarina of Time and wind waker i just couldn't beat those games breath of the wild was like the only zelda game that i was able i was able to beat and now with nintendo having like their um their n64 online service it's definitely something that i do want to go back and try to be ocarina of time i want to say the minish cap is on there somewhere for the game boy advance and Eventually, if we ever get the GameCube online service, I will try to go back to beating Wind Waker because I just heard those are really great games. But anyways, I just want to bring that with Ocarina of Time. 
how it's like a game that I played, but I just couldn't beat it because of two things. I was scared and I got confused. Now, this is where things get a little difficult, like you mentioned. So three timelines branch off from Orc Arena time or after Orc Arena time. One timeline is the here is defeated, meaning Damn it, Link I saw is defeated. Too. Yeah, yeah. You I, saw it? No, I remember from a video, but oh my God, that makes so much sense. Yeah. So the hero is defeated, meaning Link is defeated. The hero is triumphant, meaning Link beat Ganon. And the other one is Ganon. Ganon. Ganon is sealed yeah. away, <laughs> which is the adult well. timeline. Hero, child, and adult. And obviously, when it comes to the child, we're talking about uh, young Link. Seeing as how it's Marjoris Mag, you played as young, young Link. Link. Young Link. And then we just go on from their timeline, from their from Twilight, Twilight Princess and Four Swords Adventures. So... Even looking at this at this timeline, I was still like confused, like what everything meant exactly, because there's all these little subheadings and then these little like a little stars over here. And I'm like, what does that mean exactly? And so I, I literally just watched like a, f- a thing on my way back from from home after like playing like an arcade somewhere in Fairfax. I was just watched like, a quick YouTube video, like what the lore is, what the stories is with Zelda, and it's yeah, it's 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 a lot. It's a lot of information, and that video really really helped and like. For me, as a person who knows, like, I guess I wouldn't call myself a Zelda fanatic. Um, it really helped me understand, like, where the story is and how everything has, like, and, you know, well, I guess we'll eventually, like, people have been speculating, like, everything will come together for Breath of the Wild 2, which, you know, we're going to see how that goes and see what comes about in Ella. And what's funny is that, actually, what's interesting is that, Nintendo themselves have not even like confirmed or declared where in the timeline does Breath of the Wild take place or Breath of the Wild 2. No, yeah, both of them. They haven't even declared where this is, uh, where in the timeline this takes place. So I know a lot of people have been speculating, coming up with theories to where to see where that is coming from or where in the timeline it's going to be in. But I'm very curious to see where like in the timeline is Breath of the Wild going to be in because I mean, I'm sure you've seen the trailer. It's like a lot happening and yeah it's like stoked. something i'm not something... stoked for the lore aspect i'm I'm stoked for the gameplay i was at that point too for the gameplay only but after like i guess just thinking about why because i've heard how the zelda series and that story it's like very like convoluted very difficult to like grasp and so i wanted to understand why like why was it under like what what goes on you know behind the scenes and after reading of this, I just want to now I'm more in, more invested. Well, I was invested, but now I'm even more invested into the in the story Breath of the Wild too, and see how that all connects with the timeline that we have over here. And so we're just gonna see how that plays out in the next month. Very very excited. Yes. And actually, you brought up a topic about the the next Nintendo Switch. Apparently, there has been rumors, just rumors, nothing is confirmed yet that they are planning on not releasing of course but announcing some sort of like a teaser for nintendo switch 2 uh this coming year and at nintendo's e3 and not even because nintendo's e3, e3. <laughs> you know what? i'm not even surprised that e3 is canceled dude they canceled like, a lot. yeah no it's just i don't think it's, they're coming back no like everything and it's sad I, i've always wanted to go to e3 growing up but that's true yeah i mean and it's something that that me and my a lot first, of my friends have like gathered. first the Vans Warped tour now E three. Wait, Vans Warped tour is canceled. Like they're not doing that Dude, anymore. They stopped doing Vans Warped tour in like 2019. That was last year. Oh, at least tell me you were able to attend. Maybe the year before. I don't know. What was that? I bet that was lit. I bet that was crazy. Cray cray. I've not been a lot. Cray cray. But like, no. Oh. Well. Anyway, so yeah, I mean, going back to the whole E3 thing, like me and my friends were always like gather around, get like some food and just watch like whatever they're talking about. And I feel like those days are gone, you know, that now it's all like digital. You just watch things through like laptop. I, you know, I, I want to say like everyone's taking the, well, I want to say Nintendo was like one of the first to do like a digital event. I'm pretty sure there was a company that done it before when it comes to e3 but i'm seeing a lot of people just taking that route and just going full on like digital and full on like oh we're gonna you know release games announcements during our own time versus having one big you know giant gaming convention just to announce everything you know 
Yeah. Those were always so cool because it felt like more of a connection to the fans, though. It's yeah. like all the demos and like all that other stuff, you know? It was. Yeah, it was. Not to, Yeah, I'm not trying to say that I disliked it or anything. No, I loved it. You know, I loved how, knowing that. I'm purposefully certain... putting you on the defense. I'm just kidding, though. No. How no, dare no, you? I know, I know that's not true. <laughs> yeah. But no, I've I've always like enjoyed watching those like those E3 and knowing that that at a certain time at a during like certain time of the year where we're gonna get all of the year. our news. Yeah, certain time of the year we're all gathered just to watch like gaming news and just be excited or disappointed, <laughs> however you take it. But yeah, kind of miss those days, man. I agree. I think that's a good place to wrap it up. Um, we wanted to talk about banjo comma but that'll be for another time this is this is just going to show that experimenting and planning out things i like i like improving it sometimes too where it's like oh we're going to talk about Zelda. we're going to talk about smash didn't plan on it but this is why we're learning yeah that's all uh what the first episode is all about just learning the I mean, ropes this, you know. is, this is literally yeah, it's just a work in progress we'll we'll keep making changes as they they come up but you you don't start until you start so exactly you, you don't know. start until you do so you can't keep planning it all the time and mm-hmm. i'm usually guilty of planning a lot so that's literally why i was like tony we're gonna do this tomorrow otherwise we're not gonna do it <laughs> but there's... no that's great you know I'm, I'm glad you told me that we're or like we decided on saturday well supposed to be saturday today's friday um that we were going to record and i'm glad you told me that because otherwise i would have been like well are we not are we are we going to and since we did establish that we were going to record that gave me some time to at least come up with some topics for discussion and you know some points here and there and i mean i mean for our first episode i think we did like at least in my opinion i think we did pretty well yeah you know for for first Rated time five and- stars on spotify itunes podcast bookmark us like us click the like on us. the thumbs but click the like on the thumbs up and the notification bell on the screen and subscribe subscribe there you go yeah i had to do my little like cri- like i had to do the fortnite dance for youtube you know like the <laughs> fortnite dance <laughs> you've done that before no it's, it's it's a it's a metaphor i was oh. so Oh my right, god! So this I gets, have to explain gets, this, this joke gets, now. Damn it! If, okay, if this like, gets, this gets the joke, it, the layers to the joke you, is you like it's like the Fortnite dance. That's a thing. Yeah, it's like the millennial, like the millennial Macarena is like live, laugh, love. So it's the Fortnite dance of YouTube. That's that's where I was going with it. But and, you know, some jokes land, some jokes don't, and we'll have a bunch of them to throw at you next time. Fortnite dance. Actually, we should do like a K-pop dance since I'm getting very into that now. Actually. I don't think you are, but as much as I am, but I would like to touch a, um, a little bit about that, but we'll save it for next time. We'll, we'll save that, that for next time. Yeah. There you go. That's, that's what we'll do. All right. Well, it's been fun. My name is Tony. And we'll save my name for next. <laughs> my name's the tease, man. The At, this is Rosie gold. <laughs> <laughs> I just at this is Rosie Gold on all <laughs> platforms. Tony, give them your new app that's super confusing, and we're gonna keep changing because of the <laughs> fact that I you're not gonna remember how to spell it. Tell them. Yeah, I, you know app. what? I I essentially just gave out my handle, like my name's Tony. So there we go. But um, let's see. It may stay in, in my in my change. I will definitely let everyone know. Um, especially on my TikTok or Instagram. So we'll see how it goes. Still trying to figure that out. But as for now handle name Tell you about my name's that tony next time <laughs> there you go <laughs> <laughs>